never forget you. My sweet mother always suffer for me when I they cry. My mother go cry. She no know what thing to do. You know well. Now what thing they worry you, my picking? Oh. You fit get another wife. You fit get another husband. But you fit get another mother. mother. For joining us today and uh, welcome to Oche, Oche, Oche Kitchen Discussions once again this evening. Um, we have IJ Ndoku. IJ. Hey welcome to the show. Gorgeous OJ. Hey everyone. The former woman, Bad Nuju. And our special <laughs> guest for today, Uncle Tio, Tio Dakalono. And our lovely guests, welcome, sit back, and let's enjoy today. Today's topic again is motherhood. Uncle Tio. Yes, ma'am. You're a good mother, uh, Tio. Well, all uh, the mothers here, and also for all those that are aspiring to be, there's a lot of people here to give advice. Um, I guess I have to just uh, go ahead and start. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay, I think today is a very special day because it has to do with the motherhood, which is the essence of 
life on earth. Because without the mothers, I believe we'll be missing a lot of stuff. There's this poem here that I want to read. And I um, let me go straight into it. It's titled Motherhood. Motherhood, all love begins and ends there. Children are the anchors that hold a mother to life. The mother's heart is the child's schoolroom. You don't take a class, you are thrown into motherhood and learn from experience. I have some questions here and I will go straight first of all to Ijama. The first question is, what images spring to mind when you hear the word murder? For me, I will say um, a pregnant woman, although now you don't have to be pregnant to be a mother, but for me, it's like a pregnant woman, a woman with her kids, um, a woman who would do anything for her kids, a woman who like um, carry one child on her back, one like struggling with everything. So for me, the images that come with motherhood is so much helping you with homework and so many things, other things I have not. Okay. Um, OJ, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, for me, when you talk about motherhood, you talk about baby, first of all, and then a mother is the cook, she's a cleaner, she's the dry cleaner, she's the postmaster, she's the errand woman, she's the nurse. She is. <laughs> because I just remember when my kids were way younger, I was all this rolled into one. If I wanted to go to the supermarket, I just had to move out of the house with them like a fowl would take all her cheeks with her. And when I'm coming back exactly, the same yeah. thing, mm -hmm. you know, and you are at work 24 hours, because someone can come in the midnight and when you think about motherhood you lose a lot of things first of all i had to part ways with my body shape i had to part ways with my privacy i had to part ways with a lot of things i had to grow up overnight wow that is um explosive and um that's a lot of assignments for just one person <laughs> It is. But um, we'll, we'll repeat that one more time. But let's go to number two question. And this is this question is going to be for Mama. A view, um, Kutio, Can I say something? What springs to mind when I hear motherhood? Sure, <laughs> sure. Because it's slightly different from what I've heard. Okay, okay. Motherhood for me starts with modesty. Because. Okay. Being jack of all trade, in as much as I fall into that category of women that do all of that, that I'm everything, but as mm -hmm. I guess in some world, a house help fits into okay. that category as well, doing all of that, even though they don't have their own child of their own. So modesty is number one. That's what speaks a mother for me. Your okay. behavior tells me that ability to be selfless, to protect. Okay a soul or a person, that's motherhood for me. More than uh, the um, other things, yes. Yeah. Uh, because from, because from what OJ said, um, mm -hmm. everything OJ said, my husband does it too. So we, here in America, most parents, most, the father and the mother, they do good things. So everybody, you know, we share chores. So. Can I say what yeah. motherhood means to me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, for me, you know, I, beyond just being a mother, you know, even when you're not a mother and you are very caring and you are, um, you can sacrifice, you, you nurture minds, you know, because um, I've seen, I've had a boss that she wasn't a mother when I met her, but how she's so passionate about us, even because I met her when I was, I just got married. You know, she's so passionate. She's so caring. She wants you to, what, to, what do you want in life, babies, you know? 
She was, she <laughs> even came during my delivery. You know, I just see her as a mother. Though she wasn't even married, she was she didn't have a child. I, I think that's more that's motherhood for me. You know, because you might have a child and you are, you don't care, you don't, you know. Mm. Yeah. So I, I I look beyond just having your own child. I see motherhood yeah. on that area. Yeah. That's why so that you have to be pregnant to be a mother, yeah. So maybe for yeah, that, that, that's why we think to what um Ijama said earlier yeah. that um you know, to be a mother, you don't actually have to have a child. True. So that also brings to mind the emotional attachment to duty that mothers have, you know? They are, they are never off. I mean, as a, as, as a man, I am trying to relate what I know about motherhood because I have a mother that is so caring. As a matter of fact, I call her Mama Africa. <laughs> because she's the, she's the mother of all, you know what I mean? Yes. There are a lot of people that come to our house just for the fact that they see that my mother is back to the house, you know? Yeah. And um, they know once she's there, things will get to them, you know? Mm. And I believe that a mother shares more than love. She shares happiness, she shares comfort, she shares encouragement, you know? And she, she, she is, you know, all in one, you know, that's my only experience for a mother. Yeah. So um, I would say that I would like to give uh, Miss Norma an opportunity to uh, tell us how she relates to a mother. Are you, is, is it which Norma do you mean, please? You, 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 you are the only Norma here. <laughs> oh my God, I've been put on the spot. Oh my God, because usually I just listen. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Thank you, Uncle Theo, for putting her on the spot. <laughs> You're welcome. I, as a mother myself, one thing I've observed is like when it comes to maybe providing um, clothing. I don't yeah. even mind if I don't have the latest fashion, but if I see something nice for my child, I keep buying. It's almost like I feel, you know, she comes first and um, or to do things to please my child is far more than pleasing myself. But uh, that notwithstanding too, I also believe like, you know, say for example, in Christmas, they often say Christmas is for children. Um, not a believer of that. I, I feel Christmas is for everybody. So as much as I do things for my child to make her mm -hmm. progress or look nicer, I also believe that as a mother or as a parent, I should also put myself number one and make myself always, you know, okay. Because if I'm not okay, then I don't think it's nice for my child. And more of our children take pride in their mothers or their guardians looking good. Um, but I, I like what, I forgot her name, the, the lady that wears a big hat, what she said, in this modern, yeah. in this modern yeah. society, men mm -hmm. and women, a lot of them, as a matter of fact, young boys now almost want to outdo the women, you know, when it comes to raising a child. That mm. is one thing I've noticed. So as much as, you know, in our own generation, our own era, you used to have a woman cooks the food, a woman does the cleanup. But in this younger generation, a lot of men try to do as much and it's a way of showing love to their, to their spouse. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's nice. Um, let me give one more person the opportunity because we have, um, you know, limited time, but I think this number one topic uh, um, question is vital that everybody answers, you know, um, Miss uh, Janet, if you are awake, can you uh, elaborate? The question is, uh, what image is coming to mind when you hear the word mother? For me, a mother is someone that loves selflessly. They love mm -hmm. even when they do when they love to their empty. They give everything. A mother protects, 
a mother okay. guides. Okay. In fact, love is the operational word for me. They just love regardless. They just love selflessly. They ensure that the kids and everyone around them is perfect. Like, I have an eight-month-old son right now. I am yeah. sitting down here watching, making sure that he's okay. I might yeah. be here till 4 a.m. I won't sleep. <laughs> you see, a mother is someone that sacrifices. Okay. Even when things don't always fall into place for them, we give yeah. out the best that we can. We give out, like, we give out selflessly. We give out sacrificially. We're not looking for anything in return. We are just loving. So for me, mothers are sacrificial givers. Hello? Okay. Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, let's uh, quickly jump into the second question. And the question goes this way. Say, what was the most unexpected thing about motherhood? And that question goes to Mama. The, the question is unexpected itself, on its own. The unexpected thing about um, motherhood is, oh my God, in this side of the world, how challenging mm -hmm. children could be. Where I grew up, if mommy says, you cannot have this, Okay, mommy, I don't ask why, but I'll, I'll tell my daughter you cannot have this. Why? And I will explain. You say, but. I say, shut up. So it's just that challenge from this end. I'm in London, for those who don't know. Uh, the open eye of the children is, is alarming to me. Okay. I think my like yeah. generation is yeah. everywhere. You'll be so shocked. Ah, yeah. everywhere. It's the generation. It's so everywhere. That's, yeah. that's the most thing for me. Even in Nigeria, since me, I'm in Nigeria, worry. My 15 years old son, you, in fact, you must give him reason for telling him to do something or to do something. Don't give him reason. You're on your own. It's everywhere. <laughs> so, Uncle T, I'm done. That's me. Oh, okay. Um, let me ask. Binta, one more time. Wow. What was the most unexpected thing that? I mean, okay, one, me one is, is, um, what was the most unexpected thing about motherhood? To me, it's how to manage the emotions. You know, you're angry, you need to also pet them. <laughs> so, to Juggle that emotion. Uh, it's it's always um, it's always challenging. You know, you're you're trying to you're angry. You're trying to say what is right, and in another way too, you're trying to pacify them, not to take it in another way to or really understand what you're trying to say. You know, that's juggling. Mm. That it's 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 challenging and. And the man will just be there being a good dad. I <laughs> <laughs> will not continue, will not put mouth, just be a good dad, you know. <laughs> As if so they will, it will always be mom, is mommy, mommy, daddy, mommy does not, mommy does not. It's actually challenging, but thank God. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, thank you well, for that. <laughs> thank you for that. Um Miss uh, Vivian, Miss Vivian, hello, hello. Got a question for you. We'll be waiting on you to come in. Thank you for coming in right on time. The question is this: Is there a secret to being a good mother? Your your speaker is off. It's still off. On mute. Okay. 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 Is there a secret for being a good mom? 
Yes. Um, yeah, you have to be nurturing. A good mom, you have to be very compassionate and nurturing. You have to be very patient for you to be a good mom. I think these are the secrets. And most importantly, the biggest secret is to be a prayerful mom. If we're a prayerful mom, God will put the puzzles, help put the puzzles in place. So there's no easy way out. So I don't know. It's just prayer. It's a tough thing to be a mom. Very tough. Um, it's very tough. I can give you an example. Like in my house, my husband is a very quiet person. He has never, he doesn't hit the kids. I am the one who is always shouting, doing this. <laughs> so I am the bad guy at home. <laughs> Everybody's on that side, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. I am going to do the right thing. And that is what makes my home unique home. because I'm on the, and my husband is calm. So they say unlike times attract. So maybe that is the attraction. So I don't know. I just think it's with prayers, with prayers, everything is possible. Okay. Have we lost them here? Can I say? What, uh, uh, go on. We've lost you. Okay. Can I say something on that? Mm. <laughs> um, yes, granted prayer is very important. But at the same time, just as each pregnancy is different, so does each child's personality differ. So you just have to be aware of the fact and handle them dif differently. For example, I'll give myself as an example. When I was growing up, I wasn't um, very adventurous. I wasn't daring. And I never wanted to be punished. I always tried to be obedient, tried to do whatever I was told. You know, and I hated it so much when I got punished for whatever my siblings did. You know, I'll be in the room so quiet like a mouse and because someone is jumping on the bed, somebody comes in because he's an adult, tells everybody, kneel down. You know, of course I'll kneel down, but I'll be crying. I never liked that. So, and I have tried to make sure I don't do that to my kids. So I'll say that being aware of their unique personalities and handling them accordingly is the key. And for me, because I want to be that for my children and I keep telling them, I don't want to bring you guys up the way I was brought up. It may have worked for my parents, but like I said, if you consider that each child is different, yeah. it's, it's more like paying attention to their personalities. There's no way you go wrong because for, for each offense, you know that, okay, it is peculiar to this person and the, this is the culprit and you handle it accordingly. The others are watching. I That's don't think fact. they would want to do the same thing. Yeah. That's a fact. I have a set of twins. I have a set of twins, conceived the same day, gave birth to them the same day. They are two different people. And oh, yeah. they, are, they mm. are great on different level. So they yeah. are, every child is unique. I mm -hmm. have an example at home. So yeah. I know. So, so for me, about. I would say that, you know, handling them accordingly based on their personalities and generally being there for them, let mm -hmm. them know that you are their go to person, no matter mm -hmm. what. That is, that is one mm -hmm. thing that has worked for me. My children and I talk about every and anything. I tell them, even if you're wrong, tell me. Okay. <clears throat> in, in school, even if you know that, okay, I have done this and I'm very wrong, my mom is going to be mad at me. Let me know. I always tell them, what is the oh. highest thing I can do? Yeah. And sometimes they'll say, oh, you'll be so mad. You might smack me or you might shout at me. And I say, yes, but I'll never kill you because I am your mom. So for me, that is one of the things that makes it very, very easy. I wouldn't say parenting is easy. I can't even, I can't even lie. <laughs> it's a tough thing. But this is one of the things I do that actually works. Taking into consideration each child's makeup and personality. If you had 10 children, would you take into consideration each child's makeup? Oh, yeah. 10? Yeah. OK, okay yeah. You, you, so, among those 10, you right. definitely have Can two that are alike, there? you know? And, and those that do things in common, 
Because you know how it is. You would say, oh, all my kids are closed. But at the same time, if you look closely, there are those, they, they always, there are some people like in my family, I'm the middle person, okay? And I'm more or less the middle child. So it's as if I am in good terms with everybody. This one calls me and says, OJ, talk to him now. You know he'll agree. He never says no to you. But at the same time, I also know that my sister and my kid brother are very close. And yet they want to deceive me and make me believe that, oh, I'm their go-to person. So even if you have 10 children, you would still know that there are those whose behaviors are alike, even if it's not the same. And then you tend to handle them the right way. Okay, uh, thank you for that. I know. Can, you can I say something there? Yes, can sir. I, yes, there. Um, this is a, a great topic, uh, you know. Now, yeah. um, this lady who spoke last said the right things. Some forms, uh, the way we were brought, brought up in those days, you know, is, 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 is quite different now you see. Uh, people have gained more more knowledge and so on uh, now personally from 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 what i can see one uh, men or their husbands should also keep an eye on their action they should operate with the mom because by both creating that's that's when the child will listen more. secondly okay. uh, you must also start to learn your child right from small okay. to find out their their the way that is you see children are very knowledgeable when when they're small we will just take, take them for granted but they are very knowledgeable. You have to be, be patient, to be long, to find out actually what their, 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 their attitude, their everything. Once you, once you get of that, um, thing, yeah. you, that child, you, you, you will love the of, of a child, and, and the child will, will listen to you, the child will, we follow the good direction you want for her. For, for, for. Okay. You must give love. See what, what I mean, what for the kind of child. Yeah, they are talking, and then you learn how to do to... This is just oh, that is, um, I mean, which I want to learn. Yeah, me, me, Mr. Paul, I, 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 have, I, I have a very strong conviction that you are very passionate about this particular topic. But because of time, we, we shall move forward. <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued you know, yeah, you. about it. You know, but because we have a lot of questions here that, that we have to touch, and um, I will mean, you know. continue. You know, thank you for that. So, we are number. Uh, question number four. Do you have a secret, a secret prayer that you hide? Yeah. So uh, this question is for uh, Atayebo. Uh, no. Atayebo. Atayebo. Yeah. Sorry, oh, um, Mr. Oh, Joe, Ati, Ati, sorry. Yeah. Before you take that question, can we take a commercial? Then we'll come back okay. and Ati will answer that question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, I think I need to see some good stuff too. <laughs> Do you want to learn? We have group and private classes with tutor adults and kids. Do you want to learn how to speak, understand and write Igbo language? And the cheesy book class is the answer. Let us oh, achieve no. work with you effortlessly to achieve your goals. Sign up today and learn Igbo language in just 12 weeks. All our classes are virtual. We have group and private classes with tutor adults and kids. Sign up two or more people to enjoy discounts 
for further inquiries and to sign up, email us at eboclassantiche at gmail.com or call us on plus one two eight one nine four zero five four two nine. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at eboclassantiche. You'll be glad you did. Thank you very much. And um, we have Auntie Chi. We have Auntie Chi here with us. Um, Chi, are you there? Auntie Chi? Yes, I am. Just, yes, I am. Yeah. In a sentence, just give us, a, tell us a bit about this before we carry on. Thank you. Oh, there one, everybody. My name is Chi Wayanonoju. I am uh, an Igbo tutor with Auntie Chi's Igbo class. And I have just um, written up, I have just published this book, Mota Asosibo. It is a very good elementary Igbo learning book. And I promised you, you or your kids are going to enjoy learning. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from this book. You can get this book on Amazon. If you're in the UK, you can get this book uh, at www.scribblecity.com. You can also get this book on Barnes and Nobles as well. It is selling for one chikirego and you're going to have fun you know, with this, because it's quite, it's quite, um, it's quite interesting, especially for the young ones. You can see it's very colorful, you know, you're you. Not, you're ne they're never going to be bored uh, learning from it. So thank you so much, Oche Kitchen, Dalo. for this opportunity. Congratulations. Auntie, Auntie, Congratulations. Auntie, your That's book is temporarily out of stock on Amazon. Oh, please check Bands and Nobles. We, um, yeah, we, we got, last week a lot of people uh, ordered the ones that we sent out, uh, the ones that Amazon, Amazon printed out. So they are trying to make some more uh, copies. But check Bands and Nobles. We have them at Bands and Nobles. Okay. And I think, and if you want, you can actually, I can actually sell to you. I can ship to you if you're within the US. Okay. Okay. All right. Uncle, Uncle Tio, can you yes, repeat the question? Can you repeat the question so that we could proceed? Thank you, everyone, yeah. for your patience. Yeah. The question is, and this question number four, do you have a secret, a secret fear that you hide? And this question is for a table. Are As you a mother, say, right? Yes. Fear of what? Motherhood. In motherhood. Yes, in motherhood. Nah, I have no fear. They're not here. I beat them. They're happy. <laughs> <laughs> we all die one day. I have no fear. Um, a lot of it, they know that, you know, but um, the only fear I have is a fear of disappointment. Uh, that you try so hard, but so much you can teach a child and the child has to do the rest themselves. So sometimes I this, will it work well? Will I, will I be with the result? If, yeah. if I'm disappointed, how will I react? Appointment, because very advice people on children. But when it comes to your child, can you take advice? You know, so I try and take it one day at a time. I try to be as can, be. and I try to be as open as I can be. With children, when they are young, it is easy to mold them. When they get to their teenage years, there's peer pressure to think about. about. There's TV about. Also, they are not they are, they are everything anymore. I have to take that into consideration. Like now, I try to feel, I like to think I'm cool. I try to let down steps. I try to learn the slang. So in case they're cussing me, I can cuss them back because I don't want to leave me. So I try to be cool. <laughs> it's funny, but it makes me feel good. You know, so I try to override my fear. I try to, um, see things from their point of view, but the okay. same time and their parents, whether they like it. I love them, still my Yula, if you annoy me. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Oh, um, Miss Wego Mama, can you uh, elaborate more on that? Hi. I was actually having problem um, with my network. What was the question, please? Sorry. Uh, the question is, mm. do you have a secret fear that you hide? With that regards to motherhood. With regards to motherhood. Um, if I understand right, you mean something um, 
I have I something about me that no. I, I don't know. No, we got to motherhood. It has to do with, you know, your role as a mother, you know, is that some fear that you know, so you, you know, some challenges okay. that, you know. Okay. 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 Um, I have this fear of, um, not raising, um, good, ch good, um, children. Okay. And, um, we all want to, to, to do our best. So I keep trying to make sure that um, I don't disappoint myself, my society, and even my children at the end of the day. So uh, I used to have that fear more, but now understanding better, I no longer have that fear because what I've, what I've tried to do recently is um, getting my children to be, teaching them to be more mindful in everything they do. So, okay. yes, because I feel that if I equip them to think the right way, make the yeah. right decisions, it's easier for them, even when I'm not there, to, 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 to get it right, basically. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, I will let uh, Ms. Chizo answer this question, then we'll move over to the next topic which um, still remains, do you have a secret fear that you hide? Chizomora. Uh, Mora. Hello, good evening, everyone. Sorry, I'm just gonna start my video. Um, okay. Regards to uh, fears, um, I suppose we all have fears about not doing the right thing or not raising the children to the standard that we, we think, what we agree as standard deep in ourselves. My, my secret fear is not, not being good enough. Uh, what I mean good enough is um, in the sense of uh, not doing enough. I don't mean being over mothering the children or under mothering them, just being doing things just right. Um, sometimes it makes me second guess myself about what to do and at other times I try to reflect back on the kids sometimes after let's say somebody does something I'll go back and ask them uh, and say you know, what do you think about that could I have done it differently I ask them I, I try to ask my kids I try to get them involved I know it's a very unconventional way because of how I was brought up because I was brought up in an totalitarian way authoritarian way what I'm trying to do is slightly different. And with, with that comes the risk of not me thinking that you're leaving responsibility sometimes for your kids. So in summary, my fear is not being doing enough, good enough or not being what I meant to do for them. At every point in time, second guessing myself if I'm doing the right thing. Okay, That's thank you so thank you so much for that. Now this question, this is the question number five. It is very vital and vital. This is a question that you have to, you know, invite the Holy Spirit, you know, to guide you so that you can speak correctly. Why I'm saying this is because when you hear the question, you understand what I'm trying to say. The question goes this way: What are the differences between a mother and a mother-in-law? <laughs> and I will allow Miss Angela to answer that question. Who is answering? Angela. Oh, Angela's iPhone. Okay. Yes, yes, that's oh you. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, Waps, are you there? Hello. When I was in secondary school, can I remember. You? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Angela. Okay. When I was in secondary school, my friend used to say that. Um, I had desires to marry a man whose mother was dead. And we used to think that was terrible of her. Um, <laughs> but but that, that, that's because of the notion that mother-in-laws are, are, um, are out for maybe their sons and not really for their daughters-in-law. I was uh, blessed. My mother-in-law is uh, late now, but she was wonderful. I didn't have any issues with her. So the difference between a mother-in-law and a mother is that 
your, your, your mother is your mother. So uh, this is in relation to the woman in the house. Your mother yeah. is your mother. She will put up with your excesses. She will put up with your weaknesses and your strengths because she knows you. She loves you the way you are. Your mother-in-law is hoping for a perfect saint for, his, for her, her son. And therefore may not always, if she doesn't take you like her daughter, like her imperfect daughter, she would she can sometimes be a thorn uh, because she's picking uh, picking up on the uh, on your weaknesses or sometimes they're not even weaknesses just things she doesn't like about you or she's feeling insecure so that there, there, there can't be a difference it, it's just it just has to do with the mindset of that mother that uh, mother-in-law slash mother okay thank you so much uh can i ask um galazi s7 to uh, digest this question for us. The question remains, what are the differences between a mother and a mother-in-law? I have a Galaxy S7. Are you talking to me? Anybody, yeah, somebody. Oh, show. Oh, 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 flo OK, flawless. Now, I mean, I have an issue. I beg you, before I talk, honey, on the on also, if I did no. online. No, no honey's not here. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm from Delta. My husband is Igbo. So before I married, I said, please, God, don't give me a bad mother-in-law. Because I talk to my God and winch. It's a matter, what I get, you know? So God's so kind. I got married to a man. And I wanted to marry a man who would not, you know, uh, my mom said, my mom said, my I said, no, 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 I don't want that. You know, our marriage is us. So I married a, a man who does his own thing and my mother was one of the best yeah mm -hmm. but lucky you know so i don't stand in she, she knows her boundaries i know my boundaries as well you know so in fact the difference if you see me and my mother-in-law she can't she looks like my own mother than my own mom one of my mother-in-law with a very good relationship i have four boys i expect them to get someone who will make them happy because mona honey and i go 17 years i don't mean you see your i mean I'm a crazy woman, but I see, I respect my husband, you know, and my pampi are come here, you know. So I want my kids to get the same because I don't want them marrying a bad girl that will give them headache, more high BP, because I'm a mem mother, you know. So the way I treated their father, that's how I want another girl to treat my own children. So I call it. Oh, oh, yeah, kill it, son, son, yeah, kill it, yeah. What are you so? I need to make a call today, and I don't learn now. Eh? Okay. Thank you, Fala. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. That was explosive. That was really explosive. <laughs> you know, somehow I'm spiritually directed to Chizo Mora, and the question goes, in what ways do you take after your mother? Um, <laughs> thank you very much for the question. Okay. Uh, one of the ways I take after my mom is she's a warrior and I worry a lot about things. Um, okay. It's taken me a long time to arrive that, that I worry about things more than I like to acknowledge to myself. Um, it has this, it has this good and bad. It has its benefits in the sense mm -hmm. that you, you try to avoid things from going out of hand or you try to prevent things from going bad. But sorry about that. The risk is, um, um, you, you spend a lot of time hesitating, okay. planning, and sometimes you, you're in pause most times. So that's one of the qualities I inherited from her. It's taken me lots of years. Actually, it was in my adult years that I realized that I have inherited that from her and I have to manage it. Hopefully I'm managing that better than, better than she did. Okay, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, can we go to Norma Abasi for her own input? In what ways do you take after your mother? Norma Abasi, are you there? No, she's not here. She's not here now. Yes, I want to contribute something. Okay. Uh, yes, but I will have a question for you because this is exactly a question for a woman, you know? So, 
I understand, but there's something important I want to chip in. Okay, uh, go ahead. All right. Um, you said the difference between a mother and a mother-in-law. Yes, sir. Yeah. The, to me, or in my own opinion, the difference between a mother and a mother-in-law is your mother is that person that can correct you in certain things and you don't take offense. But your mother-in-law may correct you in certain things and if it's not carefully laid down, you may not forget it. You may not forgive. You may not even accept it. So when we come to that position, yeah. mother-in-law should tread carefully when it comes to um, whoever is either their son-in-law or their daughter-in-law. Most people don't address that fact and it's causing a lot of problems in families. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you so much. Um, actually, that question took us one step back, but let's do two steps forward. All right. Yes, sir. Um, having said that, let me reactivate Miss um, Antichiwe's Igbo class uh, phone. The question remains: In what uh, in what ways do you take after your mother? Oh, her resilience, I guess. My mom her is very resilient. And she's um, she's generous. Okay. Her yes. If my mom sets out to do something, you know, if she sets up her mind, she's, I would say she's a go-getter. If my mom sets out to do something, you know, nothing can stop her. Even if she has bottlenecks here and there, nothing can stop her. It might take her time, but she will get it. And also her generosity. My mom would give away the last thing she has to another person. And I think that's interesting. I saw it, to what I... So what? Hello? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, and it, sometimes it can be a fault because people take advantage of that. I also got her, <laughs> her, her, her stubbornness, just a little bit. Are you sure okay. it's a little? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> So sometimes yeah, when, we have, when we have issues and she goes like, you are very stubborn. I say, I wonder where I got it from. I just wonder where I got it from. <laughs> <laughs> well, for some reason, I, I tend to believe the stubbornness, the generosity part, I still have to confirm that because I didn't get the book free. But, uh, that, you know, but let's continue. <laughs> you know. So let's go to question number seven. And this question is from Miss Norma Abasi. The question is, this, what is your biggest fault as a mother? Oh my God. <laughs> I was preparing for the previous one because I got locked out and now you're giving me a different question. My different, uh, biggest fault as a mother. Um, I think sometimes I'm a strict talker. So, you know, I um, when I talk to my child or anybody close to me, I say things a little bit as they are. And um, I'm often accused that, I'm, that I should be a little bit more sensitive and uh, you know, that I'm not being nice. And I often say, look, when I'm talking to people that I'm not close to, I call up things and probably may not even say it all. But to you, who is my own child, if I'm not telling you the truth, who else would? And I don't say it to offend you, I only say it to make you better, you know, that I don't mean harm, you know, then often they tell me you should start with a praise before you go with condemning or, you know, telling the person off, then I try to make up again. And I, I always promise myself <laughs> to, <laughs> to go the first way, be, come with praises first, but often I don't mm -hmm. remember. So I think mm -hmm. that's a fault on my side. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, please, let's can allow. I please, can I just say one thing? I was sure. trying to to write on the chat when I kind of logged myself out. You know, the um, lady, I think her cheese or more something. You know yeah. that spoke, and she. I must really commend her so much for breastfeeding her baby right open in a live show. 
You know, she didn't have to expose much, but she, that's a true mother. I'm, I'm impressed and I, I love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well done. A real. You yeah. never be shy feeding your baby anywhere you are. There's mm -hmm. no indecent exposure. Yeah. You're doing the right that thing. That is good. Well that's done. Great. Yeah, that is good. Uh, luckily for us, um, this does not have censorship. If it does, you know, it would have, that would have been a different topic altogether. But um, can I also allow Miss? No, uh, can can she do? You know, give us not just a word of uh, you know. Add something to this question. And the question is, what is I'm, your biggest thought at the moment? I'm not a mother, man. Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm not a mother, man. So, what have you, what have you observed as a mistake? You know, a fault that most mothers have. Okay, so uh, the biggest mistake that. Yeah, most mothers have. Based on the, the biggest top, mistake that most mothers have. Okay, is not trying to connect with their with their children, not trying to build relationship with their children. Um, that's a huge, huge generation. You know, uh, when we were growing up, parents probably the way they dis they taught the way they were disciplined us was you know an act of love. Yeah, it could be an act of love, but. What he, succeeded, what, what he succeeded in doing was to pull us away from, you know, our parents. So you find people of our generation, if you ask them, who is your best friend? Very little number of persons will tell you, my mom or my dad, my best friend. They will look for an outside or um, somebody out, out there and say, that person is my best friend. So um, I, I think that biggest challenge, and, and I'm grateful to God that this new generation of parents, I'm beginning yeah. to do something about it and they are making an effort to connect to, with their children. I mean, um, it's not because she's here. Um, OG has been my very good friend. And I, I the way she, she and her kids are connected. I mean, quite envious. And um, um, it gladdens my heart because it claims that uh, uh, the whole this is me. Okay, thank you so much for that. You see, that has automatically brings us into the next question, which is very vital. Because this question, I would want us to answer it sincerely, not for the audience, but answer it sincerely from the bottom of our hearts, you know? Because this question brings about the foundation of most families how the children turn out to become at the end of the day, you know? So that question goes this way. Are you more like a mother or a best friend to your kids? And that question, I would like uh, Ms. Jama to um, say something about it. Can you guys hear me? I've been hearing audio issues. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, I'm both. Because like Norma said, um, I'm a straight shooter. I tell my kids how it is, and you know, I, I'm very playful. I'm a very goofy. Um, I call myself. I think I'm a cool mom. So I think I'm both. I shout and scream, and I discipline. And on the other hand, I I let the I talk about everything, everything. Like OJ said, I I didn't have a relationship with my mother. I was closer to my dad than to my mom. So I have um one girl too. So I want her to be very very close with me. So I. Even with my boys, I, I say I tell them everything. I want them to tell me. Wab, speak up. Wab, speak up. Huh? Speak up. Some people can't hear you. So you can hear me? We can hear you, but friendly. Speak up. Shout. <laughs> and I already have a loud voice. Okay, I was saying, um, I think I'm muted. Did you mute me? No, no, we're okay. We can hear you. Go on. We can hear you. I was saying that I'm both. I'm friend, very, very friendly with my kids because I'm, okay. a, I'm a good Okay, friend. that's cool, that's cool. Um, let's, uh, Miss Maureen, can you uh, elaborate on that? Okay. 
Morning, your phone is on mute. Can you unmute it, please? Let me unmute it. Good evening, everybody. Nice. Sorry, I was in another meeting. So we're sorry. I didn't, I didn't get you. Can you repeat the question? The question is, are you more like a mother or a best friend to your team? Oh, well, it depends on the relationship you have with your children. Like me, I'm trying to be, I have several goddaughters and my biological daughter. So I'm trying to be a friend to all of them. Why I still prove to them that I'm their mother. At times, like if I want to discipline them, when I want to discipline them, I try to make it in a way that when they don't they don't get too mad at me they just you know like at the end of it i can still call them to order and talk to them as friends so i don't know if i'm on track with okay that's cool that's cool thank you for that i'm actually running out of time but um let's answer this question before we um see if the moderator has something if we're gonna go on the commercial break or not um big oj can you uh Tell us, can you describe your mother in one word? And if so, why that? Oh, <laughs> one word. Wow. Angelic. Why she so? Was an, she was an angel. And why so is she thought of everyone else first. She didn't okay. exist until everyone else was taken care of. That's, That's how she lived. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I mean, say no more because you, you got it right there. And uh, let me confirm from Miss, um, let me confirm from Vivian Oboa. Yeah, can you unmute your microphone? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I would say she is fierce. She's a very strong woman. Um, anything she wants, she gets. Okay. Um, okay. We are very, very tall. My mom is an average woman, but she bent us. Um, she bent us. She instilled knowledge, love in us. So I would just say she was, oh, she is. She is a very strong woman. And I, I, I admire her for that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. This is the last question. And this question, I want to make sure that everybody partake in this question because um, I want us to be sincerely true, not just to ourselves, but to the audience. What did your mother and you argue about? And I want... Mama, to uh, answer that question. Um, Tio, the question yes. again, sorry. What, I said, you what did you, what did your mother and you argue about? Hey. Okay. Um, to be honest, we argue about everything. <laughs> simply because, simply oh, because know. we have that common Thing. We both, both of us loves arguing. So okay. before we reach a consensus with my mom, both of us have to argue it. Everything, even to mommy drink water. Doesn't like to argue. It's you, it's you. Yeah. Mommy likes to argue. Daddy, okay. you're here. Mommy likes to argue. So <laughs> <laughs> my daddy is here, so you know what I'm saying? We argue about everything. Everything. Okay. And we still agree. We argue, but we still agree. Okay. That's perfect. And I would like... Um, mm -hmm. Can Miss Abasi answer that question? I think my. Uh, Miss Abasi, can you answer that question, please? Okay. Um, with my mother, I um, I think more more like when I was growing up. Um, I'll probably I had this very hot pants that I liked wearing around, and she okay. would keep telling me, "You're a lady, you're a lady, don't wear that." But for me, I just thought it was cool to wear it, but usually in the house. So she always 
argued about that. That that's I think that's the main thing we argued about. But now looking back, really, you know, uh, maybe she was quite right, <laughs> but I didn't see anything wrong with it. Yeah. So things on that, and and of course, then growing up, she was a bit like uh, into asking me, when are you getting married, uh, get married, and so on and so <laughs> forth, yeah. But I think, I don't see it as something bad. I just, um, I, I, I don't, you know, I didn't see it as offensive, any of those things she said to me then. Okay, thank you for that, thank you for that. Um, Ms. Wego, Mama, can you uh, brief us on that? Funny enough, since that question came up in trying to know what I argue, <laughs> what, but honestly, nothing really. <laughs> like, nothing really. If, if Oma has the argument, if Oma argues for everybody anyway, so I think that um, makes it a little bit easier for me. <laughs> but that's your sister. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I argue for the family. <laughs> so, so most times I find out that what I'm, I'm doing is actually trying to, to make peace between both of them when the argument is there. I'm like, okay, can we find a common ground? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much. Let, let me ask the guys now because um, I think this is a general... Um, Question. Question. Um, I will ask Mr. Benson because for some reason I know even through the mask, you will. You know, Mr. Benson, can you unmute your camera and tell us what is that vital thing that you always argue with your mom? Because I know what it is, but I want you to tell others. <laughs> How do you know what it is? Benson, don't pretend you didn't hear me. Can you unmute your microphone? He's, he's, uh, he's frozen. Benson is frozen. I'll, I'll get back to him. Um, Mr. Chidi Lenchi, can you tell us? Please, can you repeat your question again, sir? And the question is, what is that thing that you're always arguing with your mother? Hey. Chasing <laughs> women. <laughs> <laughs> Was that right, Chidi? To be honest. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, yeah. Um, let me find out. Is it now or before? Or, I mean, let me, oh, so yeah, I can put it in context. <laughs> My brother, let the spirit lead you. <laughs> okay, so... Um, uh, <laughs> We argue over everything to me. <laughs> We've argued over, we argued over what it of wood. We've argued, I argued over the number of children. We've argued school. I'm not a heavy eater. You know, I don't eat, um, I don't eat heavy. So she's always complaining about that. Um, we argue, we've argued over, I, don't, I can't remember anything that any decision I've made that it doesn't lead to one form of act or the other. That's why I shouted, hey. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always arguing with this. We, we, we disagree to agree. We don't argue to, you know, <laughs> to, to destroy ourselves. <laughs> so it's not, it's not just me that argue. Good. Yeah. So, so uh, let me ask uh, Destiny. Destiny, can you uh, tell us what you argue most uh, with your mom? Uh, let me think. Uh, if there's anything I I'm sure. Okay, it's about um, you know, as when one is growing up, and they usually advice about friends. She she doesn't buy the idea of one having friends, and I used to think like. You know, it's an old school stuff. What's wrong about um, what happened? You mean boyfriend, 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 boyfriend or girlfriend? Boyfriend. Which are the friend? Boys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a boy. Okay. 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 Can I? Okay, go ahead. Boys. Because she said both. Okay, okay both. Okay. So yeah, because I was someone that used to have a lot of girlfriends. 
and she didn't like it, you know. Wow. Okay, okay. Do you want to send something? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I agree. I, 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 I hated to do anything. I'm, unfortunately, me and my mom argue about me and my daughter. So it's like my revival. Your, your, your audio is not clear. My audio is not clear? Okay, can you get me? Can you hear uh, me? No, it's still okay. not clear. Okay, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better. Okay. I said, um, me and my mom argued about chores going. I hated doing anything, sleeping, cooking, cleaning, nothing. Laundry, I hated everything. And I used to argue a lot with her. But, and the same thing is happening between me and my daughter. She, I, She's just like me when I was a girl. It's like, God, I don't know if my mother said your daughter would do the same thing to her. Because exactly, me and her are exactly like me and my mom. Arguing about She doesn't want to do anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At that point, can I ask Mr. Paul to say something about it? Your microphone is on mute. Oh, no. Right. Um, what can I say? Uh, for me, my mom passed on very early. But as much as I can remember, there's there's no argument. All right, I don't argue with my mom because she's always um, pretty true of the pretty true on that. She's very uh, religious, so so uh, all the time talking about things uh, that that are good for you, you know. Uh, oh, okay, and I respect your, your opinions and things like that. So, I didn't have any. Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, unfortunately, your audio is not clear. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Unfortunately, your audio is not clear. Um, can I just, um, because we're rounding up now, we have one more person to answer the question, then I, I will hand over to the. Um, to the you know to the moderator in charge. Yeah. I, I want. I, um, I think the new work. No, yeah, yeah, the audio is, is is pretty bad though. So let's ask Miss. Uh, yeah, yes. Gorgeous OJ, can you tell us? Because I I have a spiritual conviction that's been some particular <laughs> thing that you're worried about that was a source of argument. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, your, yeah. unfortunately, your spirit didn't lead you right this time. We are still saying the same thing. We are still saying the same thing. <laughs> okay, I had mentioned earlier that um, I'm not adventurous and um, I don't just like the headache of being scolded. You know, most of the time that I didn't do anything, not because I was trying to be a good girl, but it's just because I didn't want to go through that stress of being scolded or punished for anything. And that brings me to what I have to say to Nigerian parents. Okay. Stop shouting at your kids. Oh Lord Jesus. Stop shouting. It doesn't, it doesn't um, add value. It doesn't even, it, it makes your children to be a bit distant from you. Have conversations instead. They work better. At least I can tell you that. No matter how agitated you are, especially the moms, they are the ones that shout. I would say to every mom, and I'm also talking to myself, just learn not to shout at your kids. And the me. second thing I'd want to say <laughs> to most parents is, please, please, please stop sending your kids to go be with friends and families until they are at least 18. Okay. That is my parting words to everyone. But before I conclude, I'd like to read um, something from the chat. And to cheese Ibo class said, as a lady hoping to be a mother, what is the best advice on discipline? Should I whoop my babies when they get here as I was whooped as a child? And to Chi, I don't know if you were listening when we talked earlier about making sure what is right for each child. Mm -hmm. There are children that you only look at. 
and they confirm. There are those that need their ears to be tweaked a bit. Mm -hmm. There are those that need to be knelt down, you know, mm -hmm. at every given time and depending on their age. But just make sure that your discipline measure is not extreme. Mm -hmm. And then Ataibo said, mother's love is unconditional and mother's in mother-in-law's love is conditional. I don't quite agree. Mm -mm. I don't yeah. quite agree with that because I mean, there are people who are closer to their mothers-in-law than they are to their moms. Mm -hmm. It depends yeah. on, right. on you, who your mother-in-law is and how she sees you from the get-go. Like yeah. My husband is the last son. So apparently what love her, his mom had for him, she transferred to me. You know, she was an angel. So it, the, the difference between my mom and my mother-in-law is that my mom is the woman who raised me with all that fear and trembling and missed love in her own way. And then my mother-in-law is the woman who embraced me in love and pampered me until she died. Mm. So in that case, I would say that my mother-in-law actually loved me unconditionally. That is the kind of love I felt. And it is it differs from family to family. So each person's experience is different. Thank you. Well, thank you. So, Mama, can you take it away? Thank you. Thank you very much, thank everybody. You. Thank you, Uncle T. Thank you so thank much. Uncle T for harassing thank us with those questions. I, I was sending an invoice. No problem. <laughs> Send it to Mama. Send it to London. Pound sterling. Don't do don't do dollar. Do more. Do Send to America. Uncle T, thank you very much. Oh, I am very eager to talk. So, join us again next week. For another juicy topic, how to be a better partner. Okay. Um, we'll be having that topic next week. And thank you for everyone who's participated today. And looking at face, I guess I know you have so much to say about or so many answers to those questions. Um, OJ, I don't have to say anything about shouting because I can't stop shouting. But again, <laughs> what we talked that's about why, That's why I said learn, learn. Yeah, was, uh, we, found that, we found out that most of us, even though people didn't say it, argue with their mothers all the time. I think that's right. what mothers, mothers like that argument. It, it gives us blood. I argue with my mom. My daughter is learning to argue, but it's okay. We know where to draw the line. And um, parenting, motherhood, it, for me, the entirety of it is that selfless love, that ability to protect and care for one another. That is motherhood, irrespective of whether you spank or you kneel down and speak to them and read Bible. That ability to care matters. This sit back, let's um, enjoy a bit of music then. We'll meet you next week for this next week topic. Thank you for continually being a part of the Cheki Chin family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love. And destiny. I love you. All right, thank you, everyone. Nice. Yeah. Mm. I think I, I'm catching a lot of kisses here. From where? Well done, Mr. Oh, 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 I am late, you. I just came back from work. That's okay. But this is the And don't forget to go to YouTube. Let's go to YouTube. This episode is still there. You can enjoy the conversation. And that way you learn to be a better mother. That's true. It's there. Oh, baby, see you. I'm sure I was sitting on something, though. Oh, my God.
Thank you. 